OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hey, hello, everyone. It's uh, so good to have you all here. This is the uh, What's New in 2020 in Tops Pro Enterprise, presented by CASAS. Um, Let's go ahead and get started here. You can, it's a quick presentation of the new TE features in CASAS that are coming in 2022 and some that have already been released. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick introduction here. Uh, these are the team members that are all part of the CASAS tech team. Who we're gonna be presenting today, myself, Scott Gutman, we have Martha Perez, Luke Philly, and Laurel Duro. I'm sure you all have, uh, if you have worked with CASAS for very long, I'm sure you've talked with many or all of us at some point in the past. And I, I've definitely recognized some names there in the chat. Uh, the topics that we're going to be covering today are Classmate, Student Portal, the Windows Take a Test feature, which is an upcoming feature, the Cape Zip Code report, one of our new reports that have just been released, and then a quick update on the TE transcripts module that is upcoming uh, with TE. All right, and so I did want to throw this up right at the beginning, so you have it. This is the tech support information, the contact info, if you want to write it down. I'll also be showing this again at the end of the presentation. And so with that quick introduction, I'm going to hand this off to Martha Perez, who's going to talk to us about Classmate. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. I'm going to share my screen now. Does everybody see my screen? Yes, looks good. Perfect, okay. All right, folks, I'm going to talk about TE Classmate and how it looks on the student's perspective. So right, of course, everybody, like a student would need to download the TE Classmate app on their smartphone or on their device. It can be an iPad or a tablet. So that way they can register themselves with their email address or phone number and then be able to create an account. Once a student launches the app, you just tap on the smartphone on TE Classmate app and then it will allow you to select your role. You can select the, the, the student of course is going to select the student role, enter their email address and then tap in, type in their password. They also have this unmasking feature and as well as a keep me logged in feature so they can be logged in every time they return to the application. As soon as a student is logged in, they will be able to see their classes that they're currently enrolled in. And on the top right hand corner, you have three other icons, the chat feature, the student profile and the power button to be able to log out or continue to log in. So once we tap on the middle section on this student profile, it gives you this sub menu to select either from account, educational progress and demographics. So we're gonna go start with the account information to see what is included in this, in this option. Then we hit okay. As we see, it shows us the first name, last name, email, and phone. So the student is able to edit if needed. And that's if you allow it in Tops Pro Enterprise. Once the student has gone through the, the once the student goes through that feature, you, they can click on the arrow so they can continue. And then it'll get back to the student, to the class lister again, and then tap again on the student profile. Next off, I chose educational progress and say, okay, so we can see all the student programs information. They can see their goals, their student assessments, the, the phone numbers and education results, if they have any, and then tap again on the arrow. So we can come back to the other menu. So as you can see, it gives you a summary of all the information and then tap again on the on the bar and click on the demographics and say, okay. So then it's gonna show them all their demographic information um, that you allow them to see, as well as to update any new information if they have a new email or if they changed their cell phone number um, or if they have any new uh, demographic information, they'll be able to also update that as long as you allow that from the Tops Pro Enterprise database. 
You can see all their employment status. They can add the new employment or a new status if they have one and uh, continue to review their information such as program or funding eligibility, um, any other type of personal status. They'll have the ability to enter primary goals as well as secondary goals. Um, so if they need to enable, if you need to, if you can enable that, that'd be great. So they can update their own information from um, the beauty of their cell phone, their smartphone. So they can, you can also see other services and then they can hit save if they have anything to save. And then returning back, we will click on that arrow. And now we're gonna show the chat feature where they can click on add new. Remember that one-to-one -one chat will only be with the teacher. So the teacher is able to communicate back and forth with the student, not student to student. So once we select the teacher, uh, the student can type in any messages that they please to tell inform their teachers, as well as they can send any type of assignments via attachment. They can also do that. They would have to have it um, available to be uploaded from their device though. So in this particular case, the student is typing the message, hello teacher, here's my assignment, thank you. And then it's going to attach an item. Once you browse for the item, at the bottom section is going to give you the ability to choose a file or to choose a photo in this case uh, i'm choosing a file called education education system and once it's loaded it's going to show as a pdf and then if you hold it down for a second you'll be able to see it but if you hold it down for two or more seconds it's going to ask you if you want to delete so that's what happened to me. So I wanted to also show you that feature. And then I selected no, I tapped on it again, and then it shows you the information on how it looks, the uploaded information to the teacher. That way they can review it and then they can click on done once they're done reviewing it. All right, so back to uh, the feature, then we'll just escape out of the chat feature by clicking the arrow top up on the upper left Corner. And last thing is the power button. Once you click on it, then you'll be able to um, log out. And that's it. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn it over to Luke. Any questions about the TE Classmate app, you can type them on the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Let me go and share screen two, hopefully. All right, hopefully you guys are kind of seeing the top for enterprise now. All right, so in order for the student portal to kind of enable it, you're gonna to go to organization and student portal. This is gonna give you all the options of the demographic data collection you'd like to collect. Um, so obviously I'm an overachiever. Um, so I kind of selected everything. You don't have to, um, if you notice you can click here that will unselect the whole thing. And you know, if you just want to select the certain things like that, you can do that as well. Um, so you kind of have your choices here. Then you'll go ahead and click Save. Um, and then if what we're going to do is we're going to go to Organization and Agencies. You'll see your agency here. Um, when you double click it, this is now going to, you're going to see some options down here um, for CASAS portal under the edit view navigator, okay? So you don't need to change anything, it's just directly underneath. In order for students to register for classes and sign up for the portal um, using the, the student registration link where we just kind of, you can give them a specific link and they can kind of enroll, you have to have the auto ID generation method on. So if you'll notice under the agency identification, um, some people like to have, um, they create their own IDs, right? They don't use the um, CASAS and TOPSRO to create their auto generation IDs. Um, you can change the method to any type you need, numeric, alpha, alphanumeric, um, if you want it longer or shorter, uh, depending on your size, it also shows you um, how many unique IDs you'll have. So you can kind of change that. Um, so when you have that, the two ways you can invite students into the portal is by using the student registration invitation link. Um, and when they get that, uh, let me, they'll kind of get an email essentially. Um, 
and then they'll kind of go to this registration page, right? Um, and, and they would fill that out. But going back to enterprise, you're also able to choose the menu customization, what menus you want, they want, you want them to see personal information, educational progress, surveys. If you want them to do practices, you can disable this as well. Um, and then you also have the options down here. Allow class selection and portal, yes. Show the welcome message. Uh, and again, registration, you can kind of copy that link and email it to people you want to sign up. Um, if you do want everything kind of through the portal, obviously after they register their account, you're going to also need to set up from, you know, the classes, how you want them to actually be selected. So that's going to be in the class instances. So organization, classes, instances. And when you kind of double click on the instance, you know, you have those normal options, right? Um, and so what's going to happen is you have an option where it says selectable in portal. And so that needs to be, you know, you click the edit and then you just make sure it's selectable. Then you also have um, other options, like if you'd like a wait list, um, how many people, class capacities, you can also set these in the class instance information. Um, now let's say you have a situation where you wanna use your unique IDs and you don't necessarily want the students to create them, but you still want them to use the portal and fill out that information, maybe get some surveys, maybe track their progress. So what you can do is you can send them an invite if they're already created. So if you have like, you know, I, I like using 003, you know, we have a system. You can have them once they're in the demographics, you go records, students, demographics, and that'll pull up the lister. And what we can do is we can invite um, the student this way through enterprise. And so you'll click invite, and we're not gonna do the RLI, but we're gonna do the send account invite. Send student portal account invite to selected population. So if you wanna, Put them in and kind of select multiple ones you can so let's go ahead and do that and now we're going to go through this wizard and let me move it over so you guys can see it and so as we're kind of going through you know yep we want to select the one student um how do we want to do this let's do it by email only but you can also do by cell or by both um for the portal you don't have to have a cell so if they just have the email that'll work perfectly fine um, let's go ahead and do it today and let's see, hopefully this will work. We're not gonna do any customization, but you can just like when you're sending out the normal surveys uh, for like employment earnings. Um, and we'll go ahead and click finish. And so now we've kind of sent that invite out to the student side. And depending on how fast my internet is, uh, maybe we, well, if we don't, that's okay. So they'll essentially get an email. Um, like this, um, you know, hey, you know, here's your confirmation if you do the portal one. Um, maybe I'll get it. Eh, all right. I guess so. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, I was trying to hopefully going to try and show you live, but they'll get an email, they'll link it up. Um, that's when they can kind of go through the registration. So they'll do their name, their last name, gender, date of birth, their email, uh, phone if they want to, and then a password. Um, so that's what it's needed. You don't necessarily need the phone. They can do it with just the email, like I was saying before. Um, and once they create their account, that's going to take them to the student portal. So now they're kind of in the student portal. Um, in the top left, you know, my name is Casas, obviously, takes home. So this is that personal information selection we had early on, where when we click the organization student portal and, you know, kind of sign it up originally. Here's all the information we said we want to collect, right? All that demographic, um, you know, our races, our basic information, gender, primary, education background, everything we had selected is now essentially we can fill it in here and so you can collect it through the portal. Um, so it's kind of nice. So they'll make the selections they need to. The educational progress. So say they were taking tests, they can kind of list their all the tests they took, um, so their, you know, their goals, uh, what program they're in, um, if they had any work results, education, community results, education results, they can kind of go through that. Um, and as you guys updated, they can see their progress as well. Um, they can also, so this is the class enrollment, um, kind of like how, you know, we're currently enrolled in high school with the Bulma program, but 
maybe we wanted to join the ESL or, or join the waitlist. And you can kind of set that up how you want. Um, you don't have to have all your classes set up this way. You can just select the ones you want, um, but you can kind of give them the flexibility. When they do join a class, like I can still leave the class. Um, however, if they have student records, like class attendance, things like that attached, um, that's gonna limit them to kind of leave, right? Because they have those records kind of keeping them attached to that class. Um, so when those kind of get added in, you know, that flexibility is a little different because, you know, they're, they're part of that class. Um, the survey, so if you have surveys um, that you need to send out, you can kind of create them and set that up as well. Um, and then the practice test. So some people are saying, you know, new students, maybe they want to practice the test before they actually get there. And I guess my session expired. Can I refresh? Uh, normally it should. Oh, okay, I guess. Well, there's uh, the practice tests are normally there. Um, I might have set something up. This isn't a production server, but um, if they need to update any of their account settings, um, they can go into the account, change their name, update their email, add their phone. Um, you can also change the password, delete the account that you name. You can also set up the SMS. So if you wanted to set up um, the text messaging, they can do that as well. Um, but that's a, that's a student portal. So, and it's also, yeah, let me try one more. I, I, I'll try one more time if it doesn't work. Uh, eh, okay. Normally there's probably, I don't know why that's not, I think it's just the production. Uh, they can also change the default languages as well here. Um, but there you go. Uh, Martha, why don't you go ahead and, no, Laurel, your turn with Windows Take hey, a Test. Luke, real quick before we, uh, before we continue forward, there was a question about, uh, is it possible to send, at this point in time, send student portal invites in languages other than English? Do you know if that's in there right now? Yes, yeah, so, I'm still sharing, right? Yes. Perfect. So. When we're going back through here um, and just, you know, sending our invites essentially. Invites and portal. So it's gonna be that, I believe we have the option through the customization, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like with the employment earnings. Um, but I'm not sure if we got that added in. And it's good to note that, right, the key, this presentation is very yeah. forward looking. And so these are all of the things that you're seeing today are in development and we're continually improving as we go forward. Um, so, so, yeah, so it's not, ahead. it's going to, I think the plan is, it's going to get it where you do the, you have those drop downs and it gives you more options. Um, right now, it's not there, but if you needed to, um, I, I guess the answer is the default ones aren't there yet. Um, but if you'd like to kind of create your own, or if you have your own, you could obviously go in, set up these customization ones, um, and then send them in that language. Um, but as more people kind of use and we kind of flesh everything out, it, it will look more like that normal employment earnings where you have all those options um, and it gets built out that way. Awesome. Thanks for answering that, Luke. Appreciate it. All right. And so then let's go ahead and hand it off to Laurel. Okay, hello everybody. Um, I'll be talk I will be talking about the new Take a Test app that we're working, that we're thinking about switching to. Uh, this is another version of Secure Browser, but it's Windows version of Secure Browser. And with that, <clears throat> it's kind of like how uh, the Chromebooks have the kiosk mode and the iPads have the, what is it, guided access mode where once the test has started, the student cannot get out of the test, you know, to look around for answers or just, you know, to daydream on the internet or, or go shopping while they're testing. So this will, uh, this is Windows version of having a uh, sort of lockdown browser or kiosk mode similar to a Chromebook and the iPad, right? So 
I wish I could give you a live demo of it, but because it's a lockdown browser, if I were to try to do it, it would take me out of the meeting and shut down everything, but it would open the test, right? So I can show you um, our instructions here that will, we have these available for those who would like to pilot it just to, uh, you know, test it out. We are looking for agencies to pilot it to make sure that, you know, it's something that they would uh, think about doing. And um, as you can see here, our, the Take a Test app is for Windows 10 or later, and it has to be the professional version, right? Or the, or the educational version of Windows. It cannot be the home version because that's not available in the home version. Okay, so we have that. Um, this is for a single PC setup here that I, I'm showing here with all the different steps. You log into Windows, into the Windows administrator account. And here are all the steps, you know, you access work or school. And again, I have this available to send to those who would like to pilot it for us. Um, I will tell you that it does work very good. I tested it out myself, it works fine. But this is for mainly for agencies who have a lab of Windows 10 computers because if it's a personal computer, most of the time they're not going to buy Windows 10 Pro or the education version. They're going to have Windows 10 Home or Windows 11 Home. So this is mainly for agencies who want to um, go away from the secure browser that we're currently using right now with the green scroll bar going across the front. Um, this uh, creates another account that the student would log into. Let's see if I can. So once we set it up, let me see if I can get to the correct screen here. Sorry, hopefully I'm not making you too dizzy with scrolling so fast. Uh, let's see. Okay, so right now, once it's set up, this is what the screen would look like that the test taker would go into, right? And so the password that is set on the account is what the test taker would log into. They would type in here. And as soon as they type in the uh, their password, this is what they'll get if the station is not registered, right? If the station is already registered, then it will automatically come up to the screen where it says enter your ID. And here we have, if it's a new student, and this is, sorry, let me slow down. The part where Luke was showing you where the automation, the automatically, where Tops Pro automatically um, assigns student IDs, if this is turned on, these are the options you will get. You will get existing student. So you would type in the ID that's already being used for that student. And if it's a new student, you would select new student and it will automatically create an ID number for the new student. You would click on this green button here, take you to the next stage. It will automatically show the new ID number that's created for the student. And then the student will be allowed to enter their demographic information. Okay, and then once they have completed the demographic information, this is what they'll see on the test menu, depending on how the test is set up, right? If they're, if they're ESL students, they're more than likely will only have reading and listening. If they're ABE students or ASC students, they will have reading and math, okay? So they would click on whichever test they need to take. They would test through, you know, go through the test and complete the test. Once the, once the test has been completed and the student has finished, they will then need to hit hold the control alt delete keys, which will take them completely out of the testing screen and, and log them out of the computer and it will take them back to this screen here. It will take them back to this screen here where they first started and for the next student to come in and type in their ID and begin testing. So it's like a repeat thing puts it in, like I said, kiosk mode where student would log in there, take the test. Next, once they log out, the next student can sit down at that computer, log in their ID, and it will keep everything separate. Nothing will be uh, crossed, you know, as far as the two different students. The only way is if a student accidentally types in the wrong ID number for existing student, um, but that would be it as far as, you know, if there was a problem with a student that use somebody else's ID, okay? This can also, this is, like I said, is a single uh, PC setup that works. 
but if you want to hand this over to your IT department, they can push it out to uh, a lab, you know, labs at a time to where everything will be set up on each computer in the lab. They could have this screen set up for the uh, students to come in to test and log in with this user. Once they log in with the user, they will test. Once they're finished, they will automatically be taken back to this screen. If the computer needs to be used for something else, they can just completely log out of the test user account and log it back into the other account that's set up on the computer. And then they're able to, you know, surf the web if they have free time or look up or do some research on other, you know, uh, projects that they may have, because I'm pretty sure the lab will be a multi use lab. It's not just strictly for testing. So when it's testing, they can put this account on there, allow the students to test. When it's not for testing, then they can set it up or put, uh, use the other account where students can get on the internet and research or whatever they need to do there. Okay, if you have any questions or if you would like to pilot the take a test feature, you can email uh, tech support at casas.org, which Scott said he will put this information up again at the end of the session here. You can email tech support at casas.org and in the subject line, you can uh, type in pilot the take a test app. Okay. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and post them in the chat and I'll answer them. And with that being said, I'm all finished and I will turn it back over to Scott. Hey, Laurel, before you head out real quick, would you mind, uh -huh. uh, what would you say uh, is the main advantage why a user would want to use this testing system? You kind of had to sum it up. Okay. So, the, the main reason why a user would want to use this take a test app is because it's built by Microsoft. And so Microsoft knows which apps, you know, to allow in the background and run in the background, the secure browser that we have right now, if there's a certain app that it doesn't recognize, it will shut the test down. Well, because this is a Microsoft uh, built app, Microsoft knows its own software and knows the so what software is compatible with their devices and what are capturing software, what softwares are have capturing in them. And so because of that, it will automatically shut those down to where the student will test un uninterrupted. So you won't, you won't have to worry about, oh, the secure browser won't load because you're getting a message about this app running in the background. This bypasses all of that because again, it's a Microsoft product. And so it knows which programs are on the computer and it won't you know, uh, cause any conflict with the software that's on the computer running in the background. Awesome, that, that's great. Thank you, Laurel, appreciate All that. All right, you're very welcome. All right, so I'm gonna continue on here. We're gonna take a look at the new CAPE zip code reports. These are new reports that have just come out recently. I think that a lot of agencies are gonna find them very useful. Let me go ahead and share my screen here so that you can see the report in question. I'm gonna go through how it works and, and what it might be used for. Okay, so here we go. I, you should see now the, my TE screen. Right now I'm logged into the uh, simulation, the Rolling Hills simulation server. And so any of the data that you see here is uh, false data created just for simulation purposes. So don't worry about seeing any student info here. Uh, you should all recognize TE here if you have used, uh, if you've been with CASAS for any amount of time. To get to this new report, it's built into the CAPE tables. So that's going to be under reports, state reports, California, and then CAPE tables. And I have that open right here. This is a common report that I know a lot of agencies use. Uh, and we've added a couple new reports. You'll see if I go to report selection here, that there's two new reports here, CAPE program enrollment by zip code and city, and then CAPE program enrollment by race, gender, and zip code. That's these two down at the bottom that are checked. These are new, so these were not in your CAPE tables previously. Now, uh, if you just leave the settings default and you hit generate, just so we can go more quickly here, I've already generated it on the side here. Here's your normal CAPE summary that you're probably used to seeing. And then if we go down on the navigator on the left here and we go to the new CAPE program enrollment by zip code report, you'll see what this does. And it's really nicely organized here is it shows you all of your programs across the top. So you can see ESL, ELL, 
ABE, ASE, CTE, workforce preparation, et cetera. And then you'll see all the zip codes that are pulled from your TE system. So this is not a default list. These are the zip codes that are in your system. So the Rolling Hills simulation here has these zip codes in it and it will pair it with the city here. You'll notice that some of these cities down at the bottom have multiple zip codes associated with them. And that may be more or less true depending on your agency and how the zip codes line up to the cities in your region. And you'll see it gives us here how many students are enrolled in each program for that zip code, right? So there's one ESL ELL student in 95301 at Water, California, one ABE ASC, three CTE. And then over on the far right, you'll see there's a total of five students. And so this is really can be useful for you to see over time. This is a snapshot of uh, when the report is run of the current year. That's how I ran it this time. But this can give you a, this can show you how your enrollment has changed over time based on the zip code and where your students for each program are coming from within those zip codes. And it goes all the way down to every zip code that's present in your system. So this, this report here has 803 total students down here on the right. And you can see 276 total ESL students, 367 total ABE ASE students, 127 CTE students, et cetera, over here. Um, and so this can be really useful for a lot of agencies. I know that this is something that many agencies were manually doing in the past, but now it's built into TE as a nice report that you can just run. I'm then gonna go to the next one here and you're gonna go, oh my goodness, this is a lot of information. I can't even read it. And that's okay because what I'm going to do, this, this report is more for exporting than looking at in TE. This is the exact same information except it's broken down in even more detail by both race and gender. And so I'm going to go ahead and download this as an Excel. If you haven't uh, done the export process, let me do that again a little more slowly. When you have a report in TE, you can go export. You can name the report. So let me call this zip code report. And you can select what kind of file you want to save it as. I'm going to do it as an Excel workbook and hit save. And then give it just a second here to save that data. OK. And then I'm going to open up that report here that was just saved. And now we can see it a little bit more clearly because we can scroll across manually. And so what you'll notice is that it's, the, it's actually the same information that we saw in the previous report, like I said, but with a lot more detail. So you'll see the ELL, ESL, ELL program here, and that applies to all of these columns. And you'll see the zip codes here. So for this zip code, this is uh, race and gender breakdown. So for example, let's look at this, call, this row right here. We can see that there's one female, that's the female column, one female race marked as Native American, in the ESL, ELL column. Oh, you can't see it right now? Yeah, you'll can you do a new share, please? Yeah, let me do that, definitely. Yeah. Sorry about that, everyone. All right, is it showing now? Yes. yes. Okay, awesome. Sorry about that, Yvette and everyone else. I thought that it was sharing the screen here. Okay, so what, I'm, what I was looking at is row 21 here. You can see that this is zip code 95322. And in the ESL program, in the Native American race, in the female column, there's one student. And so it lets you really get into detail in whatever level of detail you'd like to look at for your zip code so that you can track for you know, any of the diversity and equity reasons uh, that I know are really an emphasis right now as we wanna improve the performance for all of our students. Um, and really reach everybody. And uh, so we really wanted to make sure this information was provided to agencies. It's all there, it's incredibly detailed. I know it looks like a lot, but it's there because it may be useful to you. And so we thought it's better to give it to you than not. And uh, so there it is, that's the more detailed zip code report. Now I'm going to do, um, 
And you know that that report. Let me also clarify that I'm going to switch the share back to the TE screen here. This report is like any other keep uh, or TE report, right? And you can change any filters. You can run it for specific programs. You can run it for different program years, right? If you want to run it for 2021 or 1920, you're definitely able to do so. You can change any other settings here that would be changeable for the normal Cape Tables report. So if you want to compare year to year, you can do that by running the report for each year individually and then taking a look at them uh, from year to year. And so now uh, that's our new Cape uh, zip code report. And that is available right now for every agency with TE. So go ahead and take a look, mess around with it, um, and you know, see some information there. Maybe you'll find some things that you didn't even know you'd find, you know, some new interesting things. Okay, so I'm gonna stop my share here. And now we're, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the TE transcript module. I'm sure that you've heard about uh, that module in the past, if you've been in different TE trainings. And I want you to know that we have really been working on it a lot with some pilot agencies. And there's been some changes that have made it even uh, better and better for agencies. And I just wanna give you a little overview of what that, keep, um, that uh, transcript module is going to be uh, able to do. So our goal is for you as an agency to be able to fully manage all of your high school diploma credits, your transcripts, external credits coming in from other uh, agencies, uh, as well as generating official transcripts, everything you may need to do for a high school diploma program. We want you to be able to do all of that in TOPS Pro, in TE, so that if you don't want to use a third-party program, you aren't uh, required to for that high school diploma portion. And so it will let you define custom graduation policies that relate to your agency specifically. So let's say your agency has a specific CTE requirement. You can add that as a requirement uh, through our customizable transcript policy system. You also are able to define what credits can be achieved by each class or each course in your system. Uh, you're also able to run many different reports that track the progress of individual students through the program, that track average GPAs over time, that track average performance in a class. There's really a lot of reports that are really um, useful. And as we move forward, we're going to be adding more and more and more just to make it even more usable for the users. And so right now we are, like I said, this is a really in development right now, but it is going to be coming fairly soon. And we just wanted to, we wanna make sure that everyone's aware of that. And also if you are interested in piloting the transcript module, we're not necessarily taking piloting agencies right this second, but if you're interested, please let us know at the tech support at casas.org email and so we can put your name on the list. And when we're ready to accept new pilot agencies, we can make sure we reach out to you. The one recommendation is that we recommend you not to be using a third party software uh, for managing your transcripts uh, while you're as a, in the piloting program, just because you'd have to do it duplicated on both sides. And I know that can be a lot of work for an agency. And so uh, that's the new transcript system that is coming. It's definitely coming. We're working hard on it. Um, and I believe that's the last thing that we're covering here in detail, but uh, we would love to also answer questions. Uh, you, you have a few of the tech support people at your beck and call right here. And so uh, please go ahead and feel free to type some questions in the chat. And if any of my, my fellow uh, tech support uh, Coworkers here would have anything else that they'd like to add, please feel free to do so. I guess one thing we can do while people are maybe thinking up, thinking of some questions here is Martha, would you mind, we can just kind of do a quick review of some of the topics that we talked about. So the first thing was classmate and you presented that for us. Would you mind doing just a quick summary of what classmate, you know, what its main function is? for an agency that uses CASAS products? Absolutely, Scott. Yes, uh, the TE Classmate app is um, a brand new 
um, app that can be used from the uh, beauty of your palm. You can use it from your phone. By just having your phone, a teacher can just log in really, really quick, just as you would be checking some text messages. You'll be able to enter as a teacher, add the hours of instruction at the same time, right before finishing your class, perhaps. So TE Classmate is really helpful on that. It will go on with you wherever you go by carrying your cell phone. And the student as well, the student who doesn't have a smartphone, probably everybody that I know has a smartphone. So they will be able to also download the TE Classmate app as well as to log into it and review all their demographic information. With uh, Luke's present with Luke's presentation, we saw how many demographic fields we have and how many you can enable for the portal for them to be able to uh, make edits or not. So that is also on the control of the data manager or the administrator. Awesome, thank you, Martha. That's a great summary. Yeah, and Classmate's such an awesome tool for both students and teachers. We're really excited about giving letting agencies use that. Uh, and then Luke, would you mind doing something similar, just giving us a quick review of Student Portal and what maybe the main features are that, that agencies can be excited about? Yeah, no problem, Scott. So same with Martha. Um, essentially say if they can't come in, especially during COVID, or if you have your website, you can kind of post that link, like I was talking about with the auto generation ID. Um, it's literally just one click. They can sign up, register for the class, get their UID, put in all their demographic information, register for a class, you know, enroll in the specific class um, or join the waiting list if it's kind of full. Um, and then, you know, go into the e-test and not have to fill anything out. You know, they're ready. They have everything and it's just, they, you know, here's your test, type in their number and boom, out of bing, they're taking their test. They're not wasting any time. It's a lot more um, efficient, I could say, um, gets everything done and prepared. And once they have their portal account, and, you know, that's their student uh, TE classmate account as well. They can sign right in with that. Um, so if you're trying to look for that way to just, there's one, um, I don't know if it was Iowa, but they had like a special program essentially where they just wanted to reach out to a few people. And so they were kind of using it to completely online, completely remote. Um, and that seemed to kind of work where they had all the information, they could collect everything. Um, and just do it on their own. They didn't have to come in or, or talk with somebody or do anything. They could literally just click on the link and get signed up. Awesome. So it sounds like really it can be used uh, school-wide for, for, for some agencies, and then other agencies are using it more targeted for those students that aren't able to come in. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. So another, another great feature that we're, we're excited about. Uh, and then Stacy asked, uh, she said that she's having, they're, they're currently using Classmate, but they're having a little bit of issue with account creation. Um, would we be able to get her some more detailed information or maybe we can reach out to her? Is that? Oh, definitely. Uh, we can actually, let me see. Okay, so I don't have a video for that as of right now, but we can definitely, uh, contact you directly if you can leave us your email address in the chat pod so we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and uh, we can definitely help you out while having students registered on the portal so they can register through a portal on a computer or also on the te classmate app they would just need to get registered but uh, we can definitely help you with that and that's our contact information thank you so much uh, scott for displaying that That's our phone number and email for CASAS Tech Support. Feel free at any time uh, to reach us by email and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And then by phone, uh, Martha, Laurel, would you guys uh, correct me if I'm wrong? When, when's our, our, the time that our phone lines open in the morning? Six o'clock in the morning. Awesome, so okay. six o'clock. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you, thank you, Martha, appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. And so all of us are here along with uh, some of our other team members. I'm sure you guys have talked to them before. We have Tyler and Oscar on our great team as well. And all of us are happy to help you with any tech support needs that you have. And if we're not able to help you, we can forward that along to whoever in CASAS is able to. 
So please always feel free to reach out. 